Good morning, everyone. I hope this finds you well and living your very best life in Jesus Christ. The other day I was having a conversation with a former colleague, and she, who had spent as much time teaching as I had, was talking about the seeming increase in the number of children that we ran across in our later years of teaching that seemed to have some form of emotional or mental instability. She'd said that she didn't understand this since when she was in school at their age, she doesn't ever remember that seemed to be a problem. But you see, I do understand. When I was in junior high school, I went through what I now consider and realize was my first major bout with depression. I won't go into details because it's really not relevant. But suffice it to say that I was more than a year younger than all my peers and frankly was being ostracized for several reasons that I only vaguely understood at the time. Back then, people just didn't go to counselors or psychiatrists, mostly due to the stigma involved. And frankly, my family couldn't have afforded it anyway. Since I had no one really to talk to about the situation, I just started to withdraw further and further into myself. And every day was a struggle as I did my very best to push through the day while dreading literally every moment. My parents did what they could to help, but, you know, I was at that age. I avoided them as well. For quite some time, I was literally on my own with my own thoughts. And I clearly remember that I began to spiral more and more deeply into the abyss as I gave up a little more of my hope every day. <clears throat> it was a very dark time, which I only survived by having a wonderful and caring teacher see the change in me and start spending time to just talk to me, and more than important than talk, listen to me. This wonderful Christian lady was to be the beginning of my way out of that pit. She listened and didn't judge, quietly gave me sanctuary on occasion from the hostile school world, and she lent me her strength to be able to make it through many days where I simply did not have the strength on my own. I remember she would give me Bible verses on little slips of paper some mornings, and I can still remember many of them since they provided me an anchor at the time. One of these that I've always remembered is Galatians 6.8, which reads, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. She almost always ended our conversations telling me to hang tough, because tomorrow would be a better day. It was exactly what I needed to rebuild my mind, and I thank the Lord for her. She certainly made a difference in my life. The scripture I mentioned, Galatians 6, 9 in the King James, says talks about losing heart and fainting. Well, that actually refers to giving up in our minds. The Holy Spirit tells us not to give up in our minds because if we hold on, we will eventually reap good things. Let's think for a moment about Jesus. Immediately after being baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, he was led into the wilderness to be tested and tried by the devil. He didn't complain or become discouraged or depressed. And he did not think to sp or speak negatively. He didn't become confused trying to figure out why this had happened. He went through each test victoriously. Can you imagine Jesus traveling around the country at the time talking with his disciples about hard, how hard everything was? Or can you picture him discussing how difficult the cross was going to be? Or how he dreaded the things ahead? Or how frustrating it was to have no roof over his head, no bed to sleep in at night? No, that wasn't him. Jesus drew his strength from his heavenly Father and he came out in victory. As believers, we have his spirit dwelling in us and the strength available to make it through whatever we're facing. We can handle our situations the same way Jesus did, by being mentally prepared, by having what many people have called victory thinking rather than what I call giving up thinking. I, I've often thought that anyone who tries to face down the world without, on their own without the Lord will quickly find themselves beaten down by this evil world. The only way we can persevere is not look to our strength, but to the Lord's strength when times get tough. So today, if you're facing trials, hardships, or disaster, I urge you to look up at the light instead of down into the shadow and hang tough in Him 
in his power. Just remember, though, she would always say to me, Kevin, remember, there's a better day a coming. And I know there is, don't you? I hope you make today a terrific day. I want you to know that I'm here if you need me. And I love you all.